They're all in. And they're off. For the bet, 365, Craven Stakes. This group three over a mile. Deva Waller broke out all right toward the inside. Running rail, Khartoum is prominent down the center and a little wider in the beige as Imperial Sands. Akmam is fourth in the early going. The white cap to the inside of him is La Barosa, followed by Master of the Seas and Mystery Smiles. A little wider out then to find Sandhurst in the dark blue jacket and the big white face of the Rostafarian. At the back of the field, the red sleeves and cap of Royal Air Force. They continue the way at the home straight, then Devil Waller with a small lead from Khartoum at this point. To the inside, Lapa Rosa, then Akmam and Imperial Sands complete out the front five. Next is Master of the Season and Mystery Smiles and Sandhurst, followed by the Rostafarian and then Royal Air Force. They're racing now inside the final three and a half. Devil Waller joined to the outside by Khartoum. Only a length away to Imperial Sands and Lapa Rosa on the heels of the leaders. Sandhurst, Mystery Smiles, the next two, then Akmam and Master of the Seas, who's trying to pick his way through. The Rostafarian is last of all. Royal Air Force trying to pick up the pace now as they head down towards the final quarter. Vile and quite a few chances. Imperial Sands joined by Mystery Smiles. Devil Waller keeping on. Then Labarosa, Master of the Seas, coming right into it as well now as they head inside the final furlong and a half. Master of the Seas, Labarosa. Now we're John from Mystery Smiles and Devil Waller. The Rostafarian's running on from off the speed as they head inside the last. The Godolphin pair to battle it out. Master of the Seas and Labarosa. Ahead, Bob towards the line. Master of the Seas, though, going to get on top to win the Craven. Master of the Seas from Labarossa. Mystery smiles in third, then Devil Waller and the Rostafarian. William Buick has just ridden Master of the Seas for a very deft victory in the Craven Stakes because, William, although he's got a lot of talent, I think it's fair to say he's not the most straightforward horse. Yeah, I mean, he's he was pretty straightforward there. I thought he did well, you know, and, and it was a nice experience for him. He... he he had to settle, um, and he settled quite well. And it was a slow pace, and it was always it always looked it could have the look of a bit of a bit of a messy race, you know. But um, you know, the, 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 him and, and the second horse they they pulled a long way clear of the third. So they're, they're two very nice horses, that's for sure. Don't downplay it. We were picking up your ride. We, oh. <laughs> we like we liked your move off yeah. the rail, giving yeah. yourself options, and then you know making the right moves at the right time for that horse. The way the race was developing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, when you when you're sort of three back on the rail you know it's uh, it, it, you just and going slow not very often much will change so i saw i had an option to 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 sort of move out and um the gap appeared and he, he quickened the real well i mean he's his forte is is, is his turn of foot which he showed last year which he showed in ireland in the national stakes um and you know I, I really liked the way he quickened down the dip and he leveled out then and, and finished off the race when he hit the rising ground so um you know, it's crucial for Guineas. He's got plenty of speed. He's a quick horse, um, and uh, you know, uh, he ticks a lot of boxes for for the Guineas for sure. And the hood has helped, I assume. Yeah, definitely. Um, and look, that run in Dubai would have done him good as well. Um, I think he, he's been doing everything right at home. Obviously, um, decided to try the hood first time. He, he's been going well in it at home. He's got used to it, and um, you, you know, often. You can dull him a little bit, the, the hood, but you know he, he's quite a—he's a very easy horse to—he's um, to, he, very reactive. So um, and he, look, he, he's a. Uh, he reacted very well. He quickened well. He did everything right. It was—it was, it was a, overall, it was just a nice performance. Looks like you quite like him. I'm getting that. Yeah, right. we, we always liked him. I mean, I think I think um, everyone would have got into this last winter, you know, having him as one of the the, the main hope, the main hopes for this year. So, um, and you know, everything has been been managed very well by the team with him and uh, look let's let's hope that in three weeks time we're back here. There's also one ruler though isn't there who's won the autumn stakes and was second in the Verta and Futurity trophy yeah. where does he rank in your mind? Yeah I mean he's he's as a two-year-old he's his form is rock solid um, you know he he was unlucky in the Verta and Futurity in going out now. Oh sorry okay. That, um, he was unlucky it was, the ground was very very soft um, He's a lovely horse as well, and obviously he goes straight for the Guineas. So, um, but yeah, he, he's he's doing well. It's uh, they're, they're definitely two nice colts. You're very kind to come Thank out. You when very I, much. I know you very him on his one-two in the Craven Master of the Seas beating Labarosa. A nice result for you, and plenty to like about the victory for Master of the Seas. I'd have thought. Yeah, for sure. Um, it didn't quite go to plan, to be honest. We, were, we thought Labarosa might be a bit more to the fore there, and 
we thought we might try and come off the rail a bit and give everyone a bit of racing room, but uh, he was just, just half missed the beat there. So, to, so James had to sort of sit and suffer a little bit there on the, on the fence. You know, Labarosa was just doing enough there. A bit of freshness obviously involved there, and he's a horse that just like to get on with it a bit. Um, so uh, again, I, I mark his performance up really there in finishing second. That uh, he did a bit a bit too much early on, but he, he still uh, he still you know hit the rising ground and, and, and galloped up well to the line. So uh, pleased with him. And um, as respects to Masters, he's yeah it, like I said, it was a bit messy mid race there. Will had to find a bit of a bit of a racing room and uh, had a bit of ground to make up. And as Will said, he had to he had to ask him going into the dip. He had to really you know, put him through the gears there. He said, but he. he, he Went through the dip as though it wasn't there. He said, "I want to hit the rising ground." He said, um, you know, "He again hit the line strong." So, pleasing performance I feel by both of them. Yeah, I agree. Wilson really pleased with, with the winner. Would you go to the Guinness with both of them? Um, I think it's, it's obviously as we say, it's a nice discussion to have. <laughs> um, first and foremost, let's like say, sound the old cliche, but let's get them home and make sure uh, they come out of it fit and well. Um, obviously, we've one ruler there who, whose preparation has gone well and. He's always the uh, same master season Labarosa haven't been, but you know, one ruler's had the C V that justifies, you know, probably being the, the more fancied of the, the runners, um, in, in what he achieved as a two year old there. Um but no, I mean, those two boys are gonna put themselves bang up there as well in, in, in the firing line. So um when we run two or three, we're, it's just, like I say, it's a discussion that we'll have be, we'll, we will be had over the next week. Because I suppose there are other options. I mean, you could go to France. Yeah, there's France and there's Ireland, you know, and so, yeah, so, yeah. No, it's just nice to have the horses to be able to do it. That's the main thing. Which one do you reckon is foremost in William's mind at the moment? I know that's a difficult question right yeah. now. Yeah. I think William, I mean, obviously it's all fresh now, but uh, let the dust settle. But I'd be surprised if William might want to c come off of Master of the Seas, you know. Uh, although, like I say, one ruler, he's pleased with everything he's doing so far. And, and I say, he's always been our sort of main sort of guineas hope but um, you know the way Master Seas has done it there today I feel he, he takes a lot he'll take a lot into the guineas um, you know he's got he'll have proper race match fitness on his side you know obviously two runs this year you know as, as I said before there that uh, Maidan was very much a, a stepping stone towards here and um, I, uh, as we mentioned earlier I felt that I think we'll see that form with Naval Crown and, and Master Seas hopefully progress through the season um, so yeah, like I say, it might be a, might be hard for William to get off of him, but anyway, mm. well, it's a, we'll have a, a nice discussion during the week. Interesting thoughts. And now, if I can switch to Al Wakidi, who ends in our next just about over 60 seconds. Yep, uh, very pleased. He's wintered um, surprisingly, not surprisingly, well, but very well. Um, when, he, when he broke his maiden there, it wasn't not, not expected. He, he put some nice bit of work in, but as a physical, he's done very well over the winter. Um, you know, obviously, we carried a penalty here, but he's a, a nice horse and... and um, progressing. Okay, well, very best of luck and thank you very much for your thoughts about your Craven Runners. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks, Lydia. Thank, thank you. you.